there has been a major update for Going Medieval, and it was just in time for a grand temple. There are some new items like wardrobes and large braziers, but more importantly, there are now community roles. There are three new roles in the current update. Chaplain, who are followers of the Restitution Faith. Druids, who are followers of the Old God, known as the Oak Brethren. And the last role is a bard. The bard operates from the Great Hall and brings happiness to the community. As we will see, there are requirements for these roles, and they can also level up within them. The requirements for religious rooms has changed, but we'll come back to that later. With the completion of the Grand Temple came a strange miracle. The people of East Avon's individual passions or interests had completely changed. Our technology and comfortable lives brought with it a price. People were now picky and disliked certain jobs. As our technology and our culture became more complex, so too did our personalities. We would have to rethink our job priorities for almost everyone. The crafting of medicine became categorised as alchemy and this practice was now considered an intellectual skill. There were now more complex preferences, with one yellow star meaning eagerness, two yellow stars is passionate, one red star is unwillingness, while two red stars is resentfulness. Enjoying one's work gives a mood benefit and an increased gain in experience at that task, while disliking a job does the very opposite. Now we need to think about roles. Everyone in the community at East Avon is a restitutionist, and so nobody is actually eligible to become a druid. There are many candidates for chaplain though, Gwen in particular seems to be very devout. Taking on the role as chaplain will mean that Gwen will not be able to do less skilled work. As Gwen levels up as a chaplain, she will become less interested in labour intensive jobs. We can see the requirements here. We need a Church of Restitution chapel. You might think we already have one, but the room requirements have changed for religious rooms. A bard needs at least five speechcraft to become a bard. Dudok no longer has interest in mining, and instead has a newfound interest in entertaining people. He has always been a funny one, so he seems a good candidate. However, nobody can doubt Vota's ability to capture people's hearts and minds. With a speechcraft of 50, nobody can deny that a voter is the best person to become our first bard. Notably, Mary has an interest in being a druid, which would be good if she was not so faithful to restitutionism. So let's make a voter our bard. Oddly, it claims that a voter does not have a bedroom. Vota actually does have a bedroom, she has the finest bedroom in all of East Avon. A quick toggle of the bed ownership fixes this confusion, and then Avota becomes our first bard. There is a new category to the scheduling. To best serve the community, I have a vote of work as a bard in the early morning when everyone is grabbing breakfast, a drink and a few games of checkers. These are the times that a vota will work as a bard. Outside of those hours, a vota will pick what she does, either work her other jobs or leisure activities. Fortunately, crafting is not considered beneath a vota just yet and she will continue to craft the limestone bricks for East Avon. As you can see, we now need a lectern and a shrine to make a restitution chapel. Now that we have our temple back under the grace of gods, Gwen can now become our chaplain.
For now, I'll have Gwen work in the afternoon, as I often see people pray in the afternoon. We can now hold an event. We have no bread, but our chaplain, number of participants and our room still estimate us an excellent quality event. If successful, we will have our religious needs fulfilled for several days. It also gives a positive mood buff. It was an excellent Eucharist. It seems to have increased the participants' faith in restitutionism. And there are mood boosts too. We might as well celebrate with a feast. We'll use food and wine here to improve the quality. Lavish meals, cheese, and East Avon Sacred Oak Wine will be served at the celebrations. Another excellent event. It was very late and everyone went to bed, well fed and a little drunk. The UI has slightly changed, and the events like cold snaps now show as a message rather than a pop-up. To unlock the rest of the new items, we upgrade the library a bit. The culture shift in work preferences has meant that a lot of people are now interested in research. We do a bit of an update on the old hunting tower. It no longer sits alone in the wilds, and we will eventually update it fully. There are new ornate wooden support beams, and a new ornate fencing. I'll probably incorporate these in our next build. We actually have enough materials to begin to think about building again. Gold is also now needed for some of the religious shrines, so we'll need to keep a source of that. The events have really boosted people's moods. Even on this hard difficulty scene, where mood is difficult to max out, we still have many in the community becoming joyful. The Oak Brethren rituals require animal sacrifice. As nobody is an Oak Brethren in the community, we'll not be holding those events. For now, at least.
Now that medicine making is an alchemy job and under intelligence, we have lots of interested and skilled alchemists. Medicine production is booming. Chef Athelstan may now be Dr. Athelstan. The spring has returned and we can grow again. Our underground grow was operational all through the winter, so we will not be hungry anytime soon. We'll need to get religious structures too in order to get religious structures three, even though we already have the wall hangings fitted. Religious structures three will give us larger shrines. We need bigger and better bedrooms, and maybe a better great hall. It's time to begin the next major build. First of all, it needs a surrounding defensive wall. Rather than build a second kitchen, I want to experiment with thermally insulating a meal and wine storage in the centre of this new castle. I also want the staircase to share this central location with the double height food storage. In theory, this castle will reduce commute times from bedroom to great hall to chapel. A limestone paved bridge will connect to the temple, giving us a speed bonus when moving between places. Soil has a thermal insulation of 0.95, making it the most thermal insulated building material. Hot air also rises, so a double height ceiling with metal grating on the roof of it that leads into a stairwell might create an excellent cool storage within the soil walls. It's an expensive experiment, but as East Avon, we have a reputation for architecture and innovation. The exterior will be limestone bricks, while the interior walls and the flooring will be clay bricks. This is simply to use both materials to help construction complete quicker. We will also use the new ornate wooden support beams in areas of the build.
I'll forbid the castle for now until we get the perimeter walls built. We can now learn Religious Structures 3. I continued to add plans to the castle, but it became hard to see with all the red, and I'll be making amendments as we build. I also forgot to mention, I plan to make a roof garden too, so we'll need to put soil just below the roof level. This will require the castle to have very strong stability below the garden. Johnny and Alton soon got straight to work building the monument. They would also need to find time to build the new large shrines in the chapel and the Oak Brethren Temple. These new shrines will also need a bit of gold too. The library is now a busy workshop of knowledge acquisition. We document the history of East Avon we store the names of all who have lived here, including Soya, who joins us now. Soya had no passions. She only hated art. She was callous and stout. Soya could make a good minor, as the current culture of East Avon was that nobody, not even Dudok, liked to mine anymore. The most notable thing about Soya was that she was a practicing Oak Brethren. The highly productive research library means that we can learn furniture too and begin to use the larger brazers. We also now have wardrobes and these can be a prerequisite for increasing the level of our rolled people. So Avota and Gwen will definitely be getting wardrobes, but soon we will all have grand bedrooms. We can also replace the chairs in the Great Hall with luxury linen ones. Gwen is now able to level up as a chaplain. Anyway, back to the brazers and furniture. This appears to be the happiest time in East Avon history, as people seem to be quite pleased with the cultural changes. When Soya came to us for help, she was being pursued by the river bandits. There are now extortion mechanics, and a way to buy your way out of a fight if you want to and you can afford it.
we send our wordsmith, Avota, to do the negotiations with Simon of the River Bandits. During the negotiations, Avota looked at their forces. She noticed they had not brought a single archer. That was a grave mistake by the River Bandits. Avota kindly declined their offer to extort us. A quick prayer into battle for East Avon. Before we knew it, they were here. The battle was a brutal and laggy annihilation of the river bandits. We celebrated the only way we know how, religiously. I have Sawyer take part, even though she is an Oak Brethren. However, it seems Sawyer has been having nightmares, and perhaps the gods prefer her not to take part. Someone was late to the ceremony, which caused the ceremony to completely fail, as we were waiting for the final participant. This is a sign from the gods that perhaps Soya should not take part in this ceremony, so I remove her from the participation and we rerun the ceremony. It seems it was Avota who caused the ceremony to fail last time. But we are all together now, all except Soya. The event was an unforgettable moment in the history of East Avon, for everyone except Sawyer.